Uh, what's up everybody, Dr. McKay here and welcome back to my channel. This video is a, gonna, going to be a quick breakdown of my Saturn V and we're going to be breaking down each one of the stages just so you get a familiarity with Saturn V before I do my history of NASA space, space flight, the Apollo program. So, here we go. Just for a quick reference, we have all three capsules of the space race. We have the Mercury on the left, the Gemini capsule in the middle, and then the Apollo capsule on the right. So obviously the Mercury is a one-man capsule, the Gemini is a two-man capsule, and the Apollo is a three-man capsule. The Apollo capsule also went with a launch escape tower, unlike the Gemini that opted for ejector seats. So obviously the launch escape tower is a lot more safer than a jet seat. So that's basically the capsules. Next, we just have a Titan II missile or a Titan II Gemini, just for size comparison, as you'll see in a second. Next, we have obviously the Apollo Saturn V full stack. It stands 111 meters tall. It's got 7.6 million pounds of thrust it can deploy 118 tons to Earth orbit and 44 tons to lunar orbit. It's a beast. Here's a shot of it in all its glory next to the Titan missile. It's an absolute beast. All right. So that's the full stack. Let's break down the stages of the Saturn V, starting with the first stage. So this is the first stage, S1C. It has five F1 engines on the bottom, and it also has the S1C S2 interstage ring at the top. So as we go up, this interstage ring here is basically what connects the first stage to the second stage it's not bad yeah this stage is responsible for getting the saturn 5 up past max q and basically on its way to orbit but it doesn't have enough fuel to continue and is obviously really heavy so we have to then go to the second stage which is the s2 it's powered by five j2 engines this stage basically puts the, like basically the rest of the rocket in orbit but not quite it does get it up there this stage is not as big as the first stage and obviously it tapers up at the top for the third stage so next stage we have the third stage this is the s4b it's powered by one j2 engine it also contains the lunar module adapter fairing and obviously the lunar module inside. So this is the S4B. This stage is responsible for basically circularizing the orbit around the Earth and then propelling the Apollo spacecraft towards the moon on a lunar injection burn. It is then ditched on the uh, coast towards the moon. And obviously inside here we have the lunar module. The next stage, which is one of the most important stages of the rocket, is the service module. This service module provides the command module, oxygen, power, radio, and obviously the engine to basically burn to the, to the moon and obviously to slow down to stay in the moon's orbit and to then speed up to leave the Earth, the moon's orbit to get to Earth. It's got one main engine and obviously it contains RCS thrusters and obviously all the life support equipment in. It's not bad for what it is. Pretty beastie compared to what we have today. Next, obviously we've covered this already, but we have the uh, crew capsule, command module, CM, uh, with the lunar, the lunar, the launch escape tower or the less tower. It has three seats for three crew members it has obviously oxygen and obviously has a door that can go up towards the lunar module and last but not least for the apollo saturn 5 rocket we have the lunar module without this thing we would never have landed on the moon it's called the limb or eagle or lunar lander it is a two-stage 
lander with a descent engine, which is the one on the bottom that's surrounded by gold. That is that provides the power to descend and land on the moon. Once landed, and obviously the astronauts do their thing and then come back to then leave, it separates the grey bit on top, which is actually the module bit, detaches from the descent stage, and that's the ascent stage. It has one engine, and that is responsible for then getting into lunar orbit and then rendezvousing with the command module. It fits two people for a limited amount of time on the moon, roughly two to three days with resources and whatnot. It's a little bigger than what it is in real life, but obviously, yeah, we had to get it to fit. So there we go. That is the breakdown of the Saturn V, all the stages. So we have the limb, the command module, the service module, the S4B third stage, the S2 second stage, and the S1C first stage. This rocket is an absolute beast. It's responsible for getting us to the moon back in 1969. And obviously I have the full stack on the launch tower ready for my history of NASA spaceflight Apollo mission. This is basically just a quick breakdown of the Saturn V for you all before we get into that video. I hope you all enjoyed the video and if you did, feel free to hit the like button, don't forget to comment and subscribe and stay tuned for my Apollo or NASA's like history of NASA spaceflight Apollo moon mission because that video will be coming out hopefully at the end of the week. Until then, I've been Dr. McKay, thank you all for watching and until the next video, I'll catch you all then. Cheers and goodbye.